College football season is officially here, and the NFL is really right around the corner now. A week from us doing this show live on a Thursday night, we will have Lions Chiefs on News Channel 13 kickoff to the NFL season. Absolutely love it. It's Honorado and Miller. It's Chris and Ash from home. Uh, we've got Greg Gattuso on the show, the head coach of the Albany football team. Impressive week one win for the Great Danes as they now go to Marshall, Hawaii. It's a and then Morgan State. Yeah, it's a little bit of a we'll say it's a road step trip. up. Yeah, well, from, step up for yeah. sure. But it's a long stretch. Those are two. Yeah, I mean West Virginia is a trip in itself, and then <laughs> Hawaii is about as far as you can go. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, we we are reacting to uh, what happened in the NFL preseason. Working ahead, of course. What are our impressions from the preseason? Did it mean anything? We're picking our college football playoff teams. As well, we've got the dirty, difficult, done segment. We've got the Marcellus MVP of the month. Let's get going here. This is Honorado and Miller, sponsored by Alpen House. Shout out to Alpenhaus, Katie Heck, uh, Katie uh, Osborne, Andy <laughs> Heck. Boy, I do that every week. You think I get it right by now? Katie Osborne Honorado and Miller and Andy. It's, I know. Did I say confusing. the name you of the show right. yet? Even yeah, all right, yeah. Honorado and Miller. Okay, I did yep. think on the morning news today. I said I'm, I'm going to mess this up, even though it's right in front of my face. <laughs> I might say the uh, name of the show previously. All right, let's get into it here. Uh, we've got a lot to get to. Uh, guest segment with Greg Tuso coming up. But we're jumping in with the NFL here first yep. and foremost because that's the league that rules, like it or not. What's the impression left by Aaron Rodgers' preseason performance against the Giants? H hadn't played a preseason game in almost a handful of years. Yeah. He goes out there, two series, looks pretty good. Five of eight, 47 yards, touchdown to Garrett Wilson. Yeah, it looked pretty good, and I think if you wanted to see him throw it to anybody, you wanted to see him throw it to Garrett Wilson. This is... This is going to be the guy yep. when it comes to, I know he's got a couple of his guys, Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb, but if you're Aaron Rodgers, you are kind of salivating over the potential of a guy like Garrett Wilson, who can be a big play guy for them and is only going into his second year. So I kind of want us to see those two connect, which we did. It was a, it felt like a very comfortable catch and throw mm -hmm. um, kind of like he, they've been doing it for a while. And, and yeah, he was having fun. He was comfortable. It was what you wanted to see. And even if it wasn't that, I wouldn't have been worried. But it, I think it's what Jets fans wanted to see. It's going to have a big year. Yeah. The uh, number in Vegas on Rodgers passing touchdowns is 27 and a half. Yeah. Hammer it. <laughs> Hammer it. He's going to have a big year. I, I've said it for more than yep. probably six months here, it Motivated. feels like. He's going to play really well this year. That's the only guarantee I feel like we have with him is mm -hmm. that this year will be really good, and then we'll see. I'm not as worried about that offensive line as a lot of people are. Um, I mean, Mekhi Becton looks They invested like draft picks. They, they have Dwayne Brown who will come yeah. back. I'm not as worried. It's not great, but no. I'm not as worried yeah. about that. Rodgers knows how to get rid of the ball quickly uh, if he needs to. I think beyond the numbers and the pass to Garrett Wilson, he could have uh, not 0 for 8, but just the oh, fact right. that he went out there yep. to me shows – it says a lot. Uh, he's invested. I think the teammates then feel that. And so that division – I'll get into it with the performance industrial dirty difficult on that division is – it's tough. Mm -hmm. It is really, really tough. Carol's watching. We'd love to have you on the show as always. Carol, appreciate that. The Rock Man says it should be Honorado, Miller, and Rocco. You know what he said to me today in the car? Hmm. He said it should be Honorado and Rocco. Oh, so he wants you out. And I said, you can't take me out of the show, man. So that was my suggestion, which yeah. he was cool with. I mean, we just finally put your name on the I know. show. Come on, yeah, Rock. It would be tough to... And he said he's predicting a win against Marshall and... Hawaii. Was he close on the prediction? I think it was probably a little closer in that game than he made it. Yeah. And he had like 53-14, I yeah. think. Yeah, 31-13. Yeah, not not awful. Yeah, no, not terrible. And uh, yeah, okay. All right, so, uh, you know, look, who's going to win that division? I don't know, but I, but I, I do believe the Jets are, are going to be pretty darn good. 
Um, I, I think I've, I think I'm on the record as having picked Miami to win that division, aren't I? I believe you are. Here are the holdouts still. Some big names out there. Nick Bosa and the 49ers. Uh, John Lynch, the GM of San Francisco, said a little more than a week ago uh, that he sees Trey Lance being part of the 49ers organization. <laughs> okay. Then this week he said, uh. "We are. there's no way we're trading Nick Bosa. Well, they traded Trey Lance. Is there any chance they would trade Nick Bosa? No. Yeah. That mean, it'd be crazy to yeah. trade that guy. A little bit of a different situation. Uh, there was we were watching Sports Center a little bit ago, and the question that they put up was who is the biggest impact holdout? Uh Bosa or Jones. For me, it's not even close. Hmm. Nick Bosa is the best defensive player on the planet when he's healthy. Wow. Who else? Who you got? There's a few, but he's the best defensive player on the planet when he's healthy. Okay, he's unseated Aaron Donald in your mind. Yes, Donald is. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, yep. on the other end Fine. of a brilliant career. Um, I'm a TJ Watt guy. I'm a big, big TJ yeah, Watt guy. When I, he's healthy, yeah. he's a game wrecker. But I understand yeah, the Nick Bosa stuff. Okay, but you got to stay healthy. You're no good if you're not playing for your team. No, Micah Parsons. You take Bosa not yet. over Parsons. Not okay. yet. Okay, but you know, I'm a I'm a big Parsons guy. I think that was a. That Parsons was a gal. steal. Could be a Parsons gal, yeah, I think. Parsons gal. Yeah. Parsons okay. girl, Parsons lady. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was a steal for the for the Cowboys. Uh, Chris Jones is still holding out. The Chiefs made a, a move this week to solidify that interior defensive line a little bit. Uh, but without Chris Jones, it certainly changes the dynamic of what they're able to do defensively. Sure, they can outscore anybody, but, but he's a huge factor Let's see if they get something done in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I, I just have a hard time believing these guys are going to miss games. You know, we have hey, time Jackson. here, right? We have time here. It's shorter for Jones because the Chiefs open on Thursday night. But I just, to me, this is all about, you know, as you would in, in many industries with a contract negotiation. You you wait as long as you possibly can right until you absolutely have to sign have to be to there have to play there. whatever right and and whether you're simply sending a message and that's all that that gets accomplished here is one thing but i just can't imagine these guys are going to miss actual games and then jonathan and, taylor he's going to miss games well yeah because the colts wanted to, to trade him tried to trade him entertained trade offers mm -hmm. couldn't so they put him on the pup list and he's going to miss the first four weeks yeah uh, I, who you, so I tougher. think your answer would be Bosa here and most impactful. Yeah, I also think he'll be back quicker than anyone because it. And again, how much do you believe what John Lynch has to say after he's talking out both well, sides of his mouth? Trade him, but yeah, but no, but they've also said we are going to give him a lucrative deal. Mm -hmm. Like we, it, a lucrative deal is not far off. I just think they're figuring out the details. Okay. Um, Rockman asked the question. Well, first of all, Carol asked the question. I thought TJ retired. JJ retired. Yes. What? TJ. Yes. TJ uh, still playing still for the Pittsburgh. Steelers. Uh, and Rockman said, how about Trey Lance? Rock, we got it queued up, man. Here it is. This is one of the biggest swings and misses in, it may be the, the biggest. It may be the biggest. I think RG3 said it was the biggest swing and miss or draft really and he's sure, a whatever. guy who was traded up for by yeah. the then redskins and obviously injuries derailed his yeah. career um but, but like they didn't even try it wasn't like tr injuries derailed trey lance's career it was like <clears throat> somebody snuck in when he was injured and they were just like all right we're good like we're not even gonna bother yeah. we're just gonna let it be purdy or we're gonna let it be darnold and you can Take a walk. Well, because of the draft capital they invested, what, three ones? <laughs> three first-round picks. They had to give him a chance at the beginning of last year. I know. But um, don't you get more than that. And then when he gets injured, and you probably – at that point, you probably didn't love him anyway, right? But you felt like we have to give him yeah. a chance because of what we've invested in this guy. You probably didn't love him. Okay, he gets injured. You see the opening. Purdy sets the world on fire. What was he, 8-0? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the idea that you can't lose your starting job to injury is bogus. Yeah, it's, it's always been bogus. It's not a thing. If you aren't available and somebody outperforms you, guess what? And and obviously Lance didn't show the advancement this summer. 
um, that because led they, the Niners to believe, okay, Purdy, Purdy may not be ready week one. Are we going to trade? No, the answer is we're going to go Sam Darnold if we have to. And that's the thing. I was going to say, even if you think to yourself, okay, Purdy's not ready, but you couldn't even win the two job. So you couldn't even beat out a Sam Darnold who I know you like Sam Darnold, but has yeah. been unproven in basically every know. situation he's been. I'm going to die on that hill. Maybe. Yeah. And and I I really thought oh he'll get it but he's gonna get a shot in San Francisco he's unless Bryce unless Purdy gets hurt again or just doesn't like can't come back from that injury then guess what Sam Darnold does get a shot and you see what happens yeah um, all right back right after this more NFL on the way college football playoff predictions coming you Albany head coach Greg Gattuso uh, and what's happening in baseball here with just a month to go as the Yankees make a few moves they seemed like head scratchers but now I understand. Teams, athletes, organizations. We're transforming the custom apparel industry through product and purpose. Claim your crown. You've heard of unsung heroes. The men and women of NYSCOBA are the unseen heroes. For the past year, you've learned about our many charitable endeavors. Now it is my privilege to share with you the work performed by our members, the 20,000 state correction and law enforcement officers shielded from view. They work in difficult and dangerous conditions and are an extension of the police who protect our neighborhoods. NYSCOBA honors New York's police and firefighters and salutes its own members who help deliver a peaceful night's sleep. And now, back to Honorado and Miller, sponsored by Alpen House. And now, Dirty, Difficult, and Done, sponsored by Performance Industrial. The beautiful people at Performance Industrial, Bill Miller. He may not be exactly beautiful, but uh, oh, he's beautiful. he does beautiful things in the community. That he does. Is that fair? Does beautiful things well, in like the community. That. Yeah, I know. It felt like, I don't cool. know that that really works. All right, here's my dirty, difficult, done. Uh, predicting, just because I kind of alluded to this, predicting the AFC and NFC East divisions. And I've talked myself into this because I thought for a long time picking an AFC East winner is going to be very difficult. But then I started looking at the NFC East and I thought, well, this is going to be – everybody's so high on Philly, and I get it. Yep. But I I just feel like Jalen Hurts is going to take a little bit of a step back. You now, the roster is still very, very good. Yep. But losing Miles Sanders is a bigger deal bigger deal than I think people are, are anticipating. The defense should be very, very good. They continue in, to invest draft picks there, Jalen Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit of a step back. And I just think that people are underselling the Giants. Everything Maybe. I've read out of training camp is that Daniel Jones looks better now than he's ever looked, and he had a career year last and year. And the thing is, who does he really have to throw to? Like, it, they're not great yeah. at the receiver position. I think Darren Waller is a I love huge – and he's a game changer yeah, I love for them. Him. But, like, they don't have big guys who – Jalen – a lot of Hyatt slot receivers. Fast, a lot of slot receivers. But like he better be ready to set the world on fire. Because other than that, yeah. What are the deep threats? Yeah, the defense should be good. Um, I, I think that the Giants are okay and and sneakily in Vegas. Yeah. I, I like them as a bet to make the playoffs because everybody's yeah. down on them. Yeah. Um, no, I take them to make the playoffs. I'm just not sure I take them to okay, but win uh, the but then are you putting the but then you'd be putting three teams in from the east, no? Maybe. Is Dallas out? I don't know. Okay, but I'm, this is my point here yeah. is that like Dallas has just as much capability as any other team to win this division. Yeah. I don't think the Giants win the division, but it wouldn't stun me if all of a sudden you got a 10 and 7 Giants team or 11 and 6 Giants team that wins the division. Um and Washington is not terrible. Let's yeah, see how Sam need, Howell say, plays in to, a regular season well, game. Let's see how Dak Prescott plays ever. That's always the kind of it's like it is is that it's just a historically in the last 15 years underachieving team? The Cowboys, yeah, the last 30 years, yeah, since Troy Aikman and Emmett I mean, Smith, they don't do anything. Well, since I mean, 95, 20, 25 years, 95 that's almost 30 years, yeah. you know. Um, they haven't made it to a conference championship game since then, it's crazy, yeah. 
Um, but Prescott always puts up good regular season numbers. Last year was an aberration mm-hmm. with the turnovers and interceptions. That's not who he is. He will be better. The wide receiving options are terrific. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, those wide receivers are great. Like, that that guy has – Daniel Jones would love to have that problem. Yeah. Yeah, they did lose Dalton Schultz, though. Yeah. Um, so – and now to the AFC East. I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure I've been on the record as having picked the Dolphins. I, I think will. I wrote it down somewhere. Right, I will stick with it. I, I'm picking the Dolphins to win this division. Um, I think the Bills are second. Okay. And the Jets are. Th- it wouldn't shock me if the Jets were second and the That's Bills were third. That's why I can't pick the Dolphins first because I can't imagine you can't picking reorder the Jets. Ge- yeah, I can't imagine picking the Jets sec- uh, third and the Bills second. Like it, to me, it's just it's a hard sell to think that they're going to be better than both those teams. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jasper's watching. What's up, Jasper? We like to get the uh, demographics as young as possible. Wide range, Carol's. Hey, Jasper. Uh, Rockman is making a prediction already. Ash and I will do this next week. Oh, Jeff Casey. Sorry, buddy. Um, Yeah. Washington. Yeah, that's funny, Jeff. They were complaining about Eric uh, Bionni pushing them right? too hard. I soft. know. Eh, that's every athlete now. Hello. Uh, Rock says Titans, Jets, AFC Championship, Niners, Giants. Oh, baby. We, if we get a Titans, Jets, AFC or a Niners, Championship, Giants? Rockman, I'll give you my life savings. Titans, Boy. Jets. Rockman, you have it official on the record here. <laughs> Ashes up. Oh, sorry. Uh, dirty, difficult, done. My dirty, difficult, done. And as difficult as this will be to kind of argue difficult for me to see Stefan Diggs named a captain again for the bills. And this really, for me has nothing to do with the off season drama. I think that was unnecessary off season drama. A lot of it, like the, he's not in camp. He was there. He was excused. Mm -hmm. McDermott says he was excused for a reason, whatever Mm -hmm. that I don't care about the biggest problem I have with it. And I understand this is where I'm going to lose the argument is Uh-oh. he's already been a captain. So you can't then take, they're just not going to take the captain C away. If he had never been a captain and they named him a captain in this off season, I'd have a way bigger problem with mm-hmm. it. But the way that he behaved when the bills got blown out by the Bengals in the AFC divisional round last year and just didn't show up, he behaved like a petulant child He argued with Josh Allen on the sidelines. He walked off the field early. He left the stadium before he met with the media. Mm -hmm. That, to me, Mm -hmm. like, that's not captain behavior at all. And doing it one time is enough for me to be like, nope, you're good. You've proven to us that you're you're not the guy that we want you, that other we want other guys to look up to. So for me, that was a total turnoff. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just, it's tough for me to see them be like, yeah, yeah, we're the C, because... See, I think it is the off-season issues that 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 hold your argument better here because something that happened seven months ago, right? Like if if his character and behavior was sterling between then and now, I'd say you've kind of redeemed yourself, but right? He didn't hey, you misbehave you, 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 this off-season. Well, but but they're all. I mean, look, you, you can't have multiple multiple reports about a guy wanting out of Buffalo, and for some of it not to, to be, be true, true. right? Now, everybody who tries to make a headline with what they say on TV, I get that, but there has to be some truth to it that this guy is unhappy, and and the unhappiness with the offense and the targets and all of that lingered past that game against the Bengals into the off season or into the preseason program, so. Uh, it, if he had shown up and said, man, I was a total jack, you know what, like, I, I'm better now. I, I've had some perspective, some time to step away. But it hasn't been. It hasn't been. There, it's been an off-season of storylines about Stefan Diggs not being happy in Buffalo despite him denying that. So to me, it's like you're giving a captaincy to a guy who, who may or may not really want to be there. Yeah, I think they know better than we in that. So like that was the first time we saw it. You know what I mean? Like our eyes saw it in person and you saw him behave like a child and it wasn't whatever. All the rest of this is based on reports and what people are saying. And uh, to me, what Josh Allen thinks, what his teammates think mean more. And that's what they've seen is the off season stuff. What I saw was the, the stuff of him stomping his feet and walking off the field all mopey. That's the stuff that I don't like. 
Month to go in the Major League Baseball season. Yankees have made some moves. Uh, even though they will not make the playoffs, it, it is worth watching them in September. We'll explain that. 92,000 people were at a football stadium for a volleyball game. We'll show you a picture of that, and we'll talk about the significance uh, behind that event as well. We're back right after this on Honor Auto & Miller. Whether you're into lounging, cruising, or just relaxing, summer fun starts with Alpenhaus. Enjoy a smooth ride that'll change the way you boat forever on a Barletta pontoon powered by Mercury Outboard. Nobody makes a more reliable, powerful lineup of outboard motors than Mercury to continue propelling your adventures. Now's the perfect time to buy a new Barletta pontoon with the legendary performance of a Mercury outboard. Alpenhaus, Route 30 Amsterdam, and alpenhausboats.com. What kind of stories that's been told on you That may be a lot of things in life you used to do If you can't give true love to me, I'll understand Just do the best you can The Globe Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories And now, back to Honorado and Miller. Sponsored by Alpen House. All right, Ash. Uh, Major League Baseball season reaches the final month of the season. It starts off, in my mind, with a huge series. Braves-Dodgers, four-game set starting tonight as we do this show live on a Thursday night uh, through the weekend. Could certainly be an NLCS preview. Home field advantage mm -hmm. is at play here. The Braves have a four-game lead over the Dodgers for that. Uh, big, big series. Um, for as great as Atlanta has been all year, L.A. is red hot. And they've won like 22 of 27 mm. in the month of August. Boy insane insane yep. run the Dodgers have been on bets and Freeman are red hot so that that will be a fun series uh to check out um as we uh really kind of move towards the end of the baseball season but before we get into the majors let's show a little bit of love we'll call it the minors but it's not the minors to the youngsters it's time for the MVP of the month sponsored by Marcella's Appliance Center Love the great people over at Marcella's, Johnny Marcella, Nick Madalone, uh, supporting this show each and every single week. And Ash, this was your idea, and yeah, I, I like, like it. it. And you are not a big fan of this event. Overall, well, so here's what I okay. Go, I'll. Uh, I'm not going to take this spotlight away. I'll explain in a minute. But go ahead. Okay. All right. My I wanted to give the young guys some love. Mm -hmm. uh, my Marcella's MVP of the month is. El Segundo Little League's Lewis Lappy. We got a lot of alliteration there. Little League's Lewis Lappy mm -hmm. uh, for his walk-off home run in the Little League World Series to give El Segundo and the United States the Little League World Series title over Curacao. And you watched the video, yep. and your reaction was genuinely, it made me smile. Because <laughs> for an event you don't like, you thought, you, you said something to the effect of, that's the moment of a lifetime for that. Guy. Yeah, I think like I said, what a moment. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And and look, it's a great moment. And I watched it and I had chills. And I thought, man, good for this kid who's 12 or 13 years old to literally have the moment of a lifetime. He he can talk about that forever. Um, he can show the video forever. He'll have pictures and memories with his buddies who – he may lose track of as as life goes on, but he'll have that nah, moment forever. Those teams are weirdly like yeah, they'll have reunions and stuff forever. for sure. Yep. Um, yeah. So so deserving. Very mm -hmm. cool. I'm glad. I'm glad this is your pick for MVP of the month. Uh, walk off home run to win the Little League World Series. You just don't. You know. When I watched it, I thought Joe Carter in '93 against the Phillies. Um, to win a championship in a walk-off manner, yeah, be it a home fashion. run or a buzzer beating and shot or it. whatever, like that, that is just you, you can't you just can't top it. Now, having said all that. By the way, it's the most watched Little League World Series in like five or six years. I oh, think. cool. Yeah. The Good. Leadership is great. That's great. The game itself or the overall no, I think event. the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. It is a it's an incredibly successful venture mm -hmm. and property of ESPN. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not bashing what 
ESPN is doing here by putting the Little League World Series on TV. People obviously watch it. Ashley yeah. said it's the highest rated in, in a handful of years. I'm not all that interested yeah. in watching it. I, it. I, do, I don't need to sit and watch <laughs> six innings of Little League baseball on TV when I don't know any of the players. I, I, I don't even want to watch my niece or nephew play six innings of baseball or it's softball. Nice. Well, it's not exactly high level stuff, right? Well, so this is a little higher level. I, I, exactly right. So I should be a little more dr uh, drawn to it. I'm not. Um, I just, I'm good with, I always say to people, I'm not telling you to take it off TV. Right. I'm just telling you, I'm not going to invest the time. You're to not going to drive the ratings. Watch a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But, but good for him. That was, it's, no, it was like awesome. I said, it was a and great. And you loved the moment. It was a great moment. All right, let's get to the majors here before we get to you, Albany head coach, Greg Gattuso coming up in five minutes. Uh, the Indian, the, the Guardians are going for it here. Had a Redskins reference, which was proper. Had an Indians reference that was just dated. Yeah. The Guardians here are five games out as we sit on Thursday night in the AL Central. They add Lucas Giolito and Matt Moore. Now, And who, Ronaldo Lopez. Okay. Who mismanaged the situation worse? The 49ers or the Angels? I mean, the Angels have zero pulse of what is happening here. They really went for it. And I I, I I, thought it was a mistake at the time. I said before the deadline, they should trade Otani and get what they can for him and then try to re-sign him. They had to make that pitch. Anyway, they make moves for guys like Giolito and Matt Moore, and, and, and they end up having to cut them. Anyway, Cleveland adds these two guys. Cincinnati adds your guy Harrison Bader and, and Hunter Renfro. Cincinnati is currently out of the playoff picture as well. By five we'll, games. Well, no, they've, they've got a shot at the wild card, but I think they're like a half game out of the wild yeah. card. Which of these moves matters most? Any of them do anything for no. you? Yeah. No. I don't think Cleveland wins the division. No. I, they're taking a shot, and I can at least yeah. appreciate that. No. It's a cheap move off I, a waiver yep. to get Giolito. I mean, listen, but. they're taking, and, and this was the headline, Guardians take Angels leftovers. Yeah. Like, that's what they're doing. They're just going to see if they work for them because the Angels are out-out and the Guardians are not as out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you were upset with the beta release by the Yankees. They, they cut Bader. Josh Donaldson as well, which was certainly the right move. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but now it all makes sense because I didn't think at They're the time over. that the Yankees were ready to bring up Jason Dominguez, 20 years well, old. they probably weren't, but, but they've been forced into being ready. Well, yeah, but I think they made the move on Bader knowing we're going to call Dominguez mm -hmm. up. He's been red hot in eight games at AAA, so they're going for it. Now the Yankees are worth watching. If they put Dominguez out there, and they should, they should play him basically every single day. Yeah. He needs to play. I would play him every day. And now the Yankees become worth watching a little bit because their mm -hmm. top prospects are up. Dominguez in center, Austin Wells behind the plate. Let these guys play. I guess. You're I not guess. intrigued at all by this? I, I, Wouldn't I, you rather watch Jason Dominguez than Giancarlo Stanton? Oh, yeah but I'm just not interested in watching a team that's not going to make the playoffs. Uh, I'm interested after the fact, like how Domingo's do, how Dominguez do last night. Let me check out the oh, highlights. Interesting. I'm not interested in watching it live because it means absolutely nothing. That's not true. It's, it's important for his development and it can give you, this is the problem with Yankees fans. Means nothing it to can me. give you some hope going into next year. But that's why I will check up on what he does. I don't need to watch it live. It's, three hours of my life that I'll never get back. I'll check in the next morning, five minutes, done. Found out he went three for four, found out he went 0 for four, all I need to know. Okay. Uh, this is an hour of your life you're never going to get back. That, so That rings a bell. There's that. And a lifetime of of time with me you'll, you'll never get back. I don't need it. Uh, head coach Greg Gattuso on the show here. This did not get loaded up and in. Uh, U Albany with a great uh, week one win over Fordham, a team that they played a tight game with last year. They played awesome. Um, and lost by what a field goal last year, right? Against yeah. Fordham in a high scoring game. The Danes uh, put up a lot of points this year as well against the Rams. We're talking with the head coach next.
Wallace Appliance Center, our commitment is to you, providing essential appliances that families depend on for cooking, refrigeration, cleaning, and sanitation, plus appliance repair. You can have peace of mind that Marcellus is here for you today and every day, like we have been since 1957, helping you make the right choice with trusted brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and many more. Shop Marcellus Appliance Center in-store, online, or by phone. We're here for you. What kind of stories that's been told on you? That may be a lot of things in life you used to do. If you can't give true love to me, I'll understand. Just do the best you can. The Globe Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. And now, back to Honorado and Miller. Sponsored by Alpen House. Back on Honorado and Miller. Solo expedition for me here, though, with the coach, Greg Gattuso. From you, Albany, off to a 1-0 start after a really impressive win against Fordham Week 1. A sellout crowd uh, at KC Stadium on the UA campus. And now three straight road games. Greg, it's good to see you, man. Hey, Chris, how are you? Excellent, buddy. Congrats on the win to, to get things started. Um, do you put a lot of stock in in the first game of the season, no matter how it goes, good or bad? I do. I, I think, you know, that's one of the hard things when you're an FCS coach. Sometimes that first game can mm. be a, a heartbreaker in the sense of, you know, playing a Baylor or something like that. And and I think, you know, we we needed to get out of the gates. You know, we needed the, the little bit of shot of confidence. I think we, we had a Came out of camp with a ton of confidence on both sides of the football. We were really confident in our kicking game. Um, and to see it show up on the field like that was great. You know, I think not just for the kids, but for me. You know, I mean, I I pride myself on a certain way to play. And I think that was what I want every week is us to play that type of game. And, and uh, if we do, we're going to have a great season. My guess is you got what you expected out of your quarterback after Reese Poffenbarger's incredible year last year. He backs that up with – four touchdown passes against Fordham, uh, no interceptions. Is this, was there ever a doubt that that he could replicate a lot of what he did in his freshman year? You know, I think um, we were obviously super confident in Reese, the way he prepares and, and how much he cares. I, I, I know he's going to compete. And, you know, he played, he played exceptional in certain, in, in most of the game. And there was a couple he would love to get back, obviously. Yeah. But that's all part of the first game jitters, and and he was amped up, you know. And he was he was walking around our office at like three o'clock, all wired up. And I, I was like, "You need to calm down, son." But he he's um that's how he is. He's like a linebacker playing playing quarterback, you know, the old Jim McMahon mentality. He hasn't headbutted anybody, but it's coming. <laughs> well, if he does it with a helmet on, you you'll be okay at least to protect True. yourself a little bit. True. Um, let's talk about this stretch here. This is. This is difficult, Coach. Uh, three on the road now after opening up at home. You go to Marshall this weekend, Hawaii, a bye week, which you'll certainly, I'm sure, welcome at that point, and then Morgan State. Let's talk about the thundering herd here, though. Um, what is that environment going to be like, a Saturday night game in Marshall? Yeah, I, I who knows? You know, I've, I've not been in the area, but I know, you know, I've, I've listened to Coach talking about challenging the fans to be there and you know they're all fired up about Virginia Tech coming in and he's telling them let's you know let's do the same thing for Albany and I think you know we kind of get that sometimes too is early in the season our crowds are spectacular they were great last week and we thank all of our fans for for the support and from last week but you know we need everybody there every game because it really does matter to the team and the the school and the environment that um, that you show up for a game so we hope that the Marshall fans are going to show up we're coming to, to challenge them and put on a good game. And we hope that they are filled up and cheering and yelling bad West Virginia things at us. So, you know, we're excited for it. Defense only gave up 13 points last week and uh, only a couple field goals in the first half. Didn't surrender a touchdown until the third quarter. Um, is, is, that, is that the biggest key when you go on the road in a game like this, that the defense really has to hold up to give you a chance? Yeah, I mean, it's every game. I think the key to that football game Saturday night was, you know, obviously the quarterback played well and, and there were some points on the board. But the defense really, to hold two two drives to field goals is really important. It's something, 
you know, when you if you they get a drive and they get three points, we can live with that. You know, and I think the turnover before half, the, the Anton had the sack strip and that set up the, the touchdown to put us up two scores. That that was big as well. And I think the defense played well. Coach Nestle and his guys were doing a great job. And um, we're we're excited. And that's obviously a, a different challenge this week. Um, it's these guys are pretty darn good and, and uh, it, it's a, they're fast. And so I think that the most important thing that I talk to the kids about is stay within our identity, be physical, tackle well, get, eliminate big plays and, and we'll be fine. You know, we just got to get in there and get this thing into the second half close and, and give and try to win the game. We joked before we, we came on here about the Hawaii trip, uh, the logistics that go along with sending a college football program uh, more than across the country, beyond that, uh, is extensive. How? But I like the story here, Coach, if you can share a little bit of a, with our audience about how this game came to be. Because I said, oh, it's what did you plan it, five years ago? But it's been longer than that, you said. Yeah, it was my 2015, around there, 15, 16, Jerry Koloski at the, at the time was our deputy athletic director. And he called me on the phone and said, hey, are you interested in Hawaii? called, and are you interested in playing Hawaii? My response was, um, when? And he said, 2023. And I said, Jerry, if we're both here in 2023 still, let's go to paradise. And so we are. But it is a logistical nightmare. It, it is. I mean, we've been on this for six weeks preparing mm. because, you know, a travel party of 100, you know, 70 uh, student athletes, yep. six days in Hawaii, uh, commercial. Uh, we have to fly commercial on Hawaiian Air. What could go wrong, Chris? You know, um, just make sure we have gear. And and when you when you add in, we get back from Marshall on uh, Sunday morning, about one in the morning. It, it's um, it'll be a challenge. But the first order of business is obviously Marshall, and we'll, we'll turn our attention to Hawaii, the rainbows, when we get uh, that day and a half back in Albany before we leave. All right, uh, I want to highlight some guys that are doing big things even after the program here, Greg, and that is Thomas Greeny uh, played in all four preseason games for the Cleveland Browns, had eight grabs, 61 yards, um, was productive at the tight end position, but we know how difficult it is to make it in this league. How do you feel as his college football coach having seen what he did, although he, he didn't make the roster at the end? Yeah. I, you know, we were, we were excited. We, we, you know, we felt like he was close and, and, you know, you look at Jawan Green, right? He's been battling for the last few years, and I think Thomas is not done. If he wants to to make an NFL team, he has to look at this like a positive. Hey, I made it to the final cut. I had I played well. Um, someone might pick me up, or maybe I'm playing in another league for a year and, and getting another shot. And you see Jawan's. You know, he signed with the Chiefs, and um, I'm, I'm excited for him and what he can do. And but that's the way this works. Sometimes it's it's the NFL for. For those guys that aren't in the top of the draft, it's, it's like Hollywood. You know, they 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 you see somebody in a movie and they're great, and then you never see them again. And it's it NFL's tough. It's a tough business, and you gotta you gotta hit the right team and keep keep at it. And I hope Thomas wants to do that because he's very talented. You know, beyond the guys who have have been at your program at UAlbany for four or five years, uh, you've coached some defensive studs here. I'm wondering for the people who are going to notice Jared Verse really pop this year at Florida State if they somehow missed him last year. Um, are there any similarities between Aaron Donald and Jared Verse? You know, I just sent him a text. Good luck this year, Jared. We're watching you. Uh, go be the next Aaron Donald because I I still get phone calls about Verse too. You know, they, I just did yeah. an interview for for Jared. Um, can he be the next Aaron Donald? I don't know, but you know he's he's got the ability to be a great football player. And and like Aaron Donald, he's a relentless, physical, intelligent football player who's a great person. And I, I hope I wish him the best. I'm proud of him. I, you know, I just I wish we had him last year. It might have, it might have flipped a few games having a first round draft pick on your defensive end. But um, we're proud of Jared and happy for him. And and um, I. It's big. I didn't know Aaron Donald was going to turn into Aaron Donald, so I don't know. We'll see. But that's – he's like that, though. He's got some – he's got some special mojo. You know, the great ones have that. You can't – they do – they can do everything wrong and still make a TFL, and that's when you know you got a great one. Yeah. Um, here are the home games. 
isn't this crazy? I just thought, you know, let me let me type up the home games here, and you realize how quickly this season can go. There are only four more to go, Coach. This is nuts. Villanova is the hometown heroes game, which is such a great thing you guys have done for your entire time at UAlbany. Homecoming against Rhode Island, breast cancer awareness game right outside of of October there, and then and then like that, it's Senior Day. I mean, the, the, I don't know if it blinks because you're in it every single day, but I'm looking at the schedule. I'm thinking this thing, you're, you're going to blink and it's going to be over. Yeah. You know, only having five home games is always tough. You'd like to be six and six, but you know, the reality of this level of football is we did have another home game, but we chose, it was important to take the Marshall game. And because obviously there's financial considerations playing at this level that you have to meet. And, and so for, we, we took the Marshall game and, and um, not haven't looked back, but it's five home games is tough. And, and, um, it was. I will say this: opening the season at home is a rare was a rarity for us. Did those games as we get moving here through the rest of the season, but that's why I appeal. I keep appealing to our our fans, and if we can continue to bring those people here to cheer for us and the kids, and you know, we don't just represent the university; we represent the city of Albany as well. And and so we're hoping to have a big crowd for that Villanova game. Is going to be a big one, no matter what happens in the next couple of weeks. That's that's a big one, and it's a a special night for hometown heroes and people who have family that have served in the military or in the police or fire medical, yep. all those different things. We, we, we want to have a great day for them. So hope we'll get, we'll fill the place up again. You know, I've never been to a U Albany football game when I'm not working. I've either been on the sideline working or I've been at the TV station working, but Ash and I have already planned we are going to that Villanova game. So that'd be my first game I ever see from the stands at U Albany. I'm fired up. That's awesome. If you're yelling at me from the stands, though, you're gonna have to defend yourself from my daughter. So just be careful. Look around, make sure you're safe. I'll yell like in a really high pitched voice so nobody can really dis you know. Um, hey, Ash wants to bring back a segment here, and I'll let you go after this, Greg. Um, she wants to bring back something that I used to do on a very, very, very previous podcast when it was only audio. And it was called, What Are You Watching, Reading, Listening To? So what do you coach? What are you watching, reading, and listening to? Well, I just got done with Suits. Uh, well, okay, explain Suits to me. How the heck did this show all of a sudden become the hottest show of the summer? It was like a few weeks ago, I see it trending on every social media app. And I'm like, uh, do they create new episodes? No. Why is everybody watching this? Well, I never watched it. And, you Me know, neither. There's not a whole lot of good movies anymore. I mean, you know, I'm a movie a movie guy. Yeah. And, and uh, so, you know, I, I've kind of dipped my toe into Suits and ended up really liking it. And I cool. you know, and got my daughter into it and she's watching it now. And, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good show. It's fun. It's, it's, okay. I like legal stuff and it, it's, it's also fun. And, you know, so it's, it's a good show. I just finished it. So I'm happy. It's All been right, a that's that's a watching. Um, have you? Did you? Let's do movies here real quick. Did you see Oppenheimer? I had. I couldn't get there. It was right before camp when it opened. But Mission I, I, Impossible. Excellent. Barbie. Never. <laughs> Tell the truth. Did you see Barbie? I did not. All right. Um, okay. What are you? I haven't. I'm zero for three on those. Am, am Mission. I'm a. I love Mission Impossible. As as ridiculous as they are, I love those movies. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. And, and no, and no on Barbie. Um, how about reading? You're a reader. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I got a couple of my series that I read are coming out. You know, Jack Reacher's coming out with a new book. I'm a big yeah. reader fan. And um, uh, also Jack Ryan's another fan. I'm a fan of that show and, and that, that whole book thing. And, and um, there's another series. There's a, I read a few series, you know, there's, um, the Memory Man's good from um, okay. uh, what's his name, Dobachi. But uh -huh. um, no, I'm not reading anything intelligent right now, unfortunately. That's all right. You're this, focused on uh, game this is my escape, and, you know. Yeah, I read and I read the news every day. I mean, I'm big on what's going on in the country, and um, I'm a, I'm a I'm I'm one of those I'm an observer of I love debates and all the political stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I don't love it, but I like no. the Chaos. Sometimes it's difficult to turn away from. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I just like to be up on things before I go out there and cast a vote. So I'm pretty uh, 
in tune to what's going on around the country. Are you a podcast or music guy when you're in the car? Um, straight music. I yeah. unfortunately, you know, the coaches are always trying to get me into podcasts and I've never listened to the fan. I, you know, I apologize, but I, I tell everyone I was tortured as a child. My, my mom listened to, um, she listened to uh, a guy named Jack Bogan in Pittsburgh, yeah. who's a really good guy. But when I, I spent my life hating him because my mother listened to him all night, I think it was Jack Bogan. And I could hear that in my room every night, this talk radio. And then she'd fall asleep and I'd be in there pulling my hair out <laughs> because it, she wouldn't turn the radio off. So I, I'm, I'm kind of like wounded by talk and, and podcast, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. Um, do coaches use music to get pumped up? Is there something you listen to before a game? I don't listen to anything, no, but I do, you know, I have my, my, my little Sonos in the corner for, for the day. And, and, okay. uh, but the kids are really into music, obviously, you know, our locker room is just blaring and the kids. So I have to listen to some of that once in a while, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm kind of a sit alone guy before games. I, okay. I, Everybody leaves me alone, unfortunately. I wish they'd come in and talk to me, but no one wants to poke the bear, so they uh -oh. they all they all stay away from me. I know one guy who's not afraid to walk into your office and say some things, but we'll we'll get to him on a different episode of this oh. show. Yeah, that guy follows me around the field some days too. <laughs> Coach, have a safe trip to Marshall, man. Uh great start. Keep getting it. And uh and of course you can see Coach Greg Gattuso on UL Money Football weekly every single Saturday morning on my four at 1130 with our guy, Roger Wyland. Greg, good to see you, man. Thanks for doing this. Great to see you. Give Ashley a hug. It was great seeing her on the sidelines last Saturday. It made my day. At Alpenhouse Boats, we know the value of having fun and making memories with family and friends. With a full line of versatile Sun Tracker pontoon boats featuring reliable Mercury outboard motors, it's our mission to make sure you have everything you need to get on the water and start having fun this boating season. Whether you're into fishing, relaxing with the family, or tubing and skiing, with Mercury and Sun Tracker, we're confident you'll find the perfect boat to fit your needs. Come see us at Alpenhouse Boats, Route 30 in Amsterdam, or shop online anytime at alpenhouseboats.com. You've heard of unsung heroes. The men and women of Nyscoba are the unseen heroes. For the past year, you've learned about our many charitable endeavors. Now it is my privilege to share with you the work performed by our members, the 20,000 state correction and law enforcement officers shielded from view. They work in difficult and dangerous conditions and are an extension of the police who protect our neighborhoods. NYSCOBA honors New York's police and firefighters and salutes its own members who help deliver a peaceful night's sleep. And now, back to Honorado and Miller. Sponsored by Alpen House. Always good to catch up with our guy Greg Gattuso here on the show. Uh, it had been a while. It had been uh, almost a full year. I went back and looked and said, we we talked to yeah. Greg Gattuso on August 25th. Well, no, when it hadn't been. Florida? That's not true. August 25th last year, but we did then talk to him. Um, was that when he was in Florida? I guess maybe when they announced their incoming class. Oh, okay. He was in Florida. Yeah, I yeah. That was, about that. Remember, he was in Ocala, I think. Yeah. And we were jealous. At that really nice hotel. And we were jealous. Uh, I have to say, that Coach Gattuso hug that he was talking about at mm. the end, that might be the most excited anyone's been to see me wow. in like a very, very long time. Cool. It was nice. Probably unexpected. He probably didn't yeah, expect I, to see you there. Yeah, I bet you he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, college football truly kicking off this week. It was like a week zero kind of situation last week. Um, this we get is a little bit of a week zero. Oh, 0 .5. no. 0 0.5. We get like a good game tonight and a good game Sunday, and that's close to it. <laughs> Florida, Utah, uh, which is tonight. Again, we're Thursday live night. every single Thursday night here. If you're watching us on TV, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and X. That was Twitter, but it is officially X. If you go to X.com, it takes you to Twitter.com. I'm never going to not call it Twitter. You have to. You no. got to get with the kids. I here. don't have Come to on. do anything. If I was with the kids, I'd be on TikTok and Snapchat and everything else. Not there either. Colorado and uh, TCU. So last year's uh, national championship runner up hosts Coach Prime. I'm I'm intrigued. You have to be interested. I'm you have to be interested. I'm intrigued not only as to what Colorado looks like because uh, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in what TCU looks yeah. like because we saw them play live last year against Michigan. Uh, they were very good. Score a lot. Don't play a lot of defense either team. Um, 
but yeah, I'm, they lost a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I would be interested to see if they can kind of uphold that number 17 yeah, ranking tough. and where Colorado is going to fall in the mix in year one of coach prime matchup with the Carolinas Saturday night. And then the one that everybody will look yeah, forward to Sunday one. night, LSU yep. and Florida state, they played a wild game uh, to begin the year last year. Yep. Um, and they'll do it again this year. We were just talking about our guy, Jared Verse, yep. who played at UAlbany. Um, and uh, and now he's in year two at the Seminoles, and he will be a top 10 pick when he goes into the NFL draft next Knock year at the end of the year. So how about this? For the first time in eight years, Georgia is the first team not named Alabama or Clemson to be the preseason favorite to win the college football playoffs. So even when Georgia won it two years ago, going into last season, they were co-favorites in Vegas with Alabama. So for the first time in eight years, some school other than Bama and Clemson is favored to win the college football playoff. And they're not a heavy favorite. It's like plus, plus 225. But there's a gap between Georgia and Alabama. I don't think Georgia wins it. This is the final year of the college football playoff at four teams. We will go to 12 yeah. next year, begrudgingly. What a, what a jump. Who gets in? Here are my four teams. You went kind of dark horsey. Um, Michigan was in it last year. Alabama Texas is, and Florida is State always are there. Dark horsey. So Texas, I think, wins the Big Twelve. They will put it all together this year, I believe. They have okay. a, they have to play Alabama in Tuscaloosa, even if they don't win that game. The Longhorns, I still think, get the college football playoff bid by winning the Big Twelve. They might have a loss, but but they may not. This is a team that's good enough to win every single game. Uh, on its schedule. And then I'm going Florida State here. Um, they don't have to beat LSU Sunday night. So if they lose and people freak out, you shouldn't. They just have to win the ACC. And that is to beat Clemson and to win the ACC championship. I think if these four teams win their conference championship games and obviously play, play well, they will get in over a Pac-12. I don't see a Pac-12 team get having fewer than two losses this year. So but you don't think there will be a second SEC, second Big Big Ten? No. I don't. No I Ohio State? No Ohio State. Michi yeah. That game is in Ann Arbor this year. Mm -hmm. So Michigan will go to the Big Ten championship game again, and it won't mm -hmm. be Ohio State. And then they'll have to beat an Iowa or Wisconsin or whatever in, in that game. Uh, Penn State to me is the Big Ten dark horse here. Penn State has a okay. chance. It, you know, I, I, I messed around with thinking, eh, maybe I'll put Penn State in. But to me, it was... It, too far of a shot. J.J. McCarthy and Blake Corum and, and Donovan Edwards. I mean, the running attack for Michigan is so good. They'll play well enough defensively. It's it's Michigan for me. And is I, their defense going to be better than last year? Well, they may not need to be. And I think Bama wins it all. I think Bama wins it all this year. Uh, people are are a little down on on Ab Alabama right now, but, the, but they, they still, on their roster, this is my last thought on it. The Crimson Tide have more four- and five-star recruits than any other team in the country, more than Georgia, more than Michigan, more than Texas, you, right? more than Ohio State. Maybe not, but I think people are like, oh, wow, I figured it'd be Georgia. They've won the last yeah. two titles. But it, but Alabama still has all of the talent there, and now they've got people doubting them. So I'm on Alabama. You love Alabama. Okay. I yeah. went much chalkier, mm -hmm. we're, we'll call it. Uh, as I said to you, I was in the other room, not looking at the rankings, didn't want to remember who the rankings were. And the four teams that I came up with were the four teams at the top of the rankings. So I said, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to go all chalk. Okay. Uh, so I added in LSU mm -hmm. as a little like bit that. of a dark horse. Like and that. I'm going to go with Ohio State okay. and yep. instead of Michigan, mm -hmm. because I'm not as big a believer in Michigan as everyone else is. So I'm going with the, yes, Georgia and Alabama, because I think Georgia does get there, and I think Alabama gets there, then Ohio State, LSU. How about this? So we rattled off the games that we're looking forward to this weekend, or at least are worth watching. Our teams? guy no. Mitch Young says, how about Nebraska, Minnesota? Not awful. Not awful, no, because not awful. here's the deal, Mitch, and Mitch worked for some time in Nebraska, correct? Um, these are two teams that are like – Middle of the Big Ten, mm -hmm. but I'm interested in what Matt Rule Nebraska. might bring to Nebraska, yeah. right? That and and look from a coaching matchup, Fleck and Rule, awesome, fun, yeah. 
That's a, this is Saturday night game, Mitch. Yeah. I've I've got it in You're my head. It's it's on my uh my my brain DVR. Oh. I'm making Your sure that I'll lobe. I'll find a way to, to watch it. Uh, that is a coach ISO cam dream. Mm. The two of them. Yeah. But I was asking you, no chance we get those three teams from the SEC in. Not going to get three. No, I know. Sorry, but I, I, was I wasn't. Picking, I was. I was. Yeah. Picking the three that not I gonna think are going to be better, and, and I understand that you're not going to get three, but they're the the four teams I think will be best. But oh, maybe Ohio State just continues to pump out wide receivers, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's but always unreal. have real. But like back to the '90s, I mean, Joey Galloway and yeah, company Heartline, you're about. like those guys. Yeah, it's. That's what they do. Yeah, They're a factory. Good. Did you see this, everybody? Um, Speaking of, unbelievable. Nebraska. Yeah, 92,003 fans filled the football stadium for a volleyball match. Now, this isn't any volleyball team. They're multiple national championship program. They were playing against Omaha. They had a country music concert going as well uh, with Scotty McCreary, but 92 thousand people right like scotty mccreary is not game. drawn no. ninety two thousand on his maybe. own yeah incredible uh it sets the record for uh most attended female sporting event breaking a record sent last year pretty sure it was last year ninety one thousand uh barcelona against real madrid so this just is uh, this is where it, this is becoming a thing though it's becoming a break the record thing i don't know about that but it probably you went from ninety one to ninety two well, it feels a little bit like they're just. So trying you to think like push Nebraska is just? Little. This was just a play. This is just. A I'm not saying just a play, but stunt. the the idea that we're going 92 is like, oh yeah, let's outdo the last person, and it's cool mm -hmm. that you're doing it for a women's sport, and that there was support behind it, and yeah. putting a volleyball game match in a football field yeah. is a cool idea, and just getting those people into that building is an achievement in itself. But yeah, a little bit of like a. Hmm. Let's get the record. Does this do we did it at Cuse all the time? I know. Break the record night. Yeah. Okay. So you're 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 saying lame. You're saying not, lame. No, I'm not saying lame. I'm not saying it's not lame. It's awesome. But someone else will do it next year and it'll be 93. You know what? Like I just feel like that's gonna start a trend of what it would be a cool trend. Unless they're going to play a UConn women's basketball game in a football stadium. On a, yeah. Where where else, where are you going to get 93,000 people to a, a female sporting event? The World Cup. For sure. When the World Cup is back in the United States, you could they, I mean, sure they just played it. it. I know. But you, if you really rallied the troops and said, let's do it, play somewhere where we could get it, you could get that. I think here's the challenge with soccer. Gotta though. have a good the World soccer Cup field <clears throat> takes up too much of the oh, space. The, yeah, you don't have a state. You know, like Michigan can put. If I guess if you're going to play a, a, a play World Cup a game stadium. at Ann Arbor, yeah, then you could get 110. Yeah, you'd have to play at a college stadium. But you're not playing there. I know. You don't have so you don't have the stadium capacity to break yeah. this record. The reason this works is because the volleyball court takes up so and little you space. Put you them. put people down on the field. Yeah, and that's what happens at the final four too. Correct. You can put all those people in a football field. So again, but yeah, I just a UConn women's basketball game. I could what see has doing the ability it, to do it. That's what I mean. The ability, it is would it? be something like a world cup game. It's just not going to be feasible because of the venues that right, you have those right at. which is why i don't think it makes it super easy to just you know attempt to break this thing every single year that's all okay. so i mean I, and i know you're not you're certainly not down on women's sports no you did um, i know you said this is I a think big it's deal lame. like don't be doing that to me good god i'm gonna get emails tonight <laughs> thanks for watching honorado and miller everybody it was lame the show was lame